Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and another episode of Journey to the UK. I'm a little bit stressed, in fact I lost a little bit of my hair because we officially started work on the E9 and we've encountered some problems. Problems that could possibly affect our timeline on getting the car to the depot for it to be shipped to the UK. So if you guys want to see the drama that we encountered, stay tuned because you're also going to be losing some hair. I want to show you guys uh, the problems that we encountered thus far with the car. Now we need to find the place where the car is going to stand up until I arrive in the UK or up until the car goes to Birmingham for the show. So the gents at Car Audio and Security, Raj and Palm, legends, I promise you guys I look up to them totally, they are doing some insane stuff uh, with cars. Right, guys. So before I show you guys the other aspects, I want to show you guys uh, the problems that we encountered thus far with the car. So this being the first bag E9 in Africa, um, nobody's done it before in our country and in Africa, meaning that there is no air suspension kit that is bolt on for this car, so it's got to be modified. Uh, and also, because split wheels are so rare in our country and we don't have the hardware, uh, we need to now measure the wheel so that the wheel can be built according to the car but we can only do that if we get the air suspension to fit correctly and the car to sit correctly so can you see when you build a car you start with one thing if that thing is not right it can affect the next phase of the car so that's where we at now um, so I want to actually show you guys the problems that we are encountering now so follow me Okay, so guys, we're sitting with the problem now. So I want to explain to you guys how wheels and offsets work, right? So on most wheels, on a wrap wheel behind the wheel or on an OEM wheel, sometimes behind the wheel, you'll find the specifications of the wheel. So the car's offset is different to that of the wheel. So when you have certain offsets, if your car's offset is 20 and you have a 40 offset, or if you have a negative offset, it shifts the way the wheel sits on your car. This wheel's offset is 45, the car's offset is actually around 20, 25. So now we're encountering a problem with the wheel, where the wheel is sitting too far back and it's touching the airbag. And when we actually play with the height of the suspension, because the wheel is also touching on the rear suspension, the wheel is limited, so we can't get an accurate uh, uh, indication on how low the sky is going to go with this wheel. However, due to this, I'm now able to actually measure how I want the wheel built. Okay guys, so, so I want to explain to you guys how split wheels work. So in front of me is an original set of BBS RS wheels. Uh, it's a very sought after wheel. Unfortunately, in South Africa, uh, the split wheel game is not very big, uh, purely because of the cost to, to, to get the hardware and also the cost of the wheel. Um, overseas, to get parts for those wheels is much easier. Now, you might be asking me parts. A split wheel is a wheel where you can disassemble it. You get a two-piece split and you get a three-piece split. A two-piece split is basically where you are able to take the face of the wheel off a three-piece split is where you're able to separate the lip the barrel and the face so uh, when i when i initially got the wheels a good buddy of mine shazzy uh, he's got a sick bag uh, five series he's also into his split wheels and he imports wheels uh, so he brought in eight sets of bbs rs wheels and uh, i bought all eight sets uh, I sold six sets and I kept two sets for myself uh, purely because of the scarcity of the wheels and the type of wheel it is. 
Um, so the set in particular, the one set in particular is for the E9. The other set I'm possibly going to build for the Barn Find IS because uh, that's my dream wheel on an IS, that's my ultimate wheel. Uh, but now I want to show you guys what we're going to do now, right? So, two options. We could import the lips and the barrels in different sizes to accommodate. The problem with that is the time frame to get the hardware here into SA and the cost factor. Um, due to our, I always say our lovely uh, currency or our lovely performing rent, um, our money versus the dollar versus the, the UK pound is not very favorable. So it makes importing these wheels uh, parts or the hardware for these wheels very expensive. And eventually you sit with a very expensive set and the day you want to sell, you sit with the wheel because you've overcapitalized in the wheel. So uh, our good buddies at iTech uh, Mag Repairs are going to be doing the custom work on the wheel. So for the back, so you guys will notice, this is a narrow and wide set, right? I want to show you guys how cool these wheels are. These wheels actually come with serial numbers and a specific series. So you can see the difference in the height. This is a BBS RS137 and this is a BBS RS245. Uh, same wheel, just a different wheel spec. And this one's offset, so I want to show you guys something here. You can see the BBS logo, the Germany logo. This is the specs of the wheel. So it's a 7J, it's a 16 inch, and it's a 45 offset, right? This one here is a 8J, 16 inch, 30 offset. So your offsets are different um, on the wheels. The PCD car uh, on, on the wheel standard is 5114. Uh, the gents changed the PCD to 5120 so it can fit on the BMW car. Uh, because that's BMW PCD or, or one of the PCDs for BMW. So what we need to do is, right, we're sitting with the problem now where the back of the wheel is pressing against the airbag and also the rear suspension arm. So how do we solve that problem? So Hitech is basically going to cut the wheel and shift the lip a bit more to give us a bit more of clearance. And then they're going to add because the wheel is going to be stepped from 16 to 17 or 18. I'm still deciding on what's going to look better, but I can only make that decision once we're done doing the measurements on the car. So it's possibly going to be a 17 inch because if you look at the overseas E9s, they're running very narrow wheels purely because of the way the suspension is set up and the way the car is set up or in terms of uh, the offset and the suspension arm and all of it. So we can't go very wide like what you can go with on an E30. Um, so that I, I would have liked big dishes. So we're going to try and see what's the biggest dish we can put on. So what do you guys think? Do you guys think that we should go 16 to 17 or should we step 16 to 18? Comment with your suggestions down below. Uh, you, you guys know that we're building the car together and we are going as a country to go and represent South Africa. So your input matters. So that's our first problem, right? Then the second issue we're sitting with is when we actually lift the control arm up or the rear arm, the issue we're sitting with is that the arm is now touching against the body. Now that normally happens on, 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 on golf and that where you have to C notch the chassis in order to allow, what's it, your CV, ne? your side shaft, your side shaft to go up so the car can go lower. We can't do that at the back because it's going to affect a lot of things negatively. So that's, one, that's the second problem we're facing. Uh, so hopefully uh, we can get it right. But for now, we're going to try our best to measure the wheel. So I think, Edie, let's do this, right? Let us. Yeah, so. Is it clearing? Yeah. Okay. Okay, check it out. So what I've done now, I've taken off the wheel nuts. I've pushed the wheel a bit more forward. Uh, so it gets the clearance just to see how low we can actually go.
Yeah. I got it. Can you go more? Go more. Go more. Go more. Go more. Go more. 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 Go, 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 go. Wait. Yeah, yeah. Can you go more? Is it clapping? Okay, so ideally that's more or less where we want the car to sit. Um, if it wasn't for the rear suspension, the car would have gone a bit lower, but I think that's the max. And you can see the wheel is not sitting flush against the hub. So it's going to make it a little bit difficult to measure the wheel. But I will be able to measure it and give a bit of an idea on how I want the wheel built. Um, so ultimately, I want to go for tuck on this car. I don't want to go for fitment. Uh, purely because this arch is not... I don't think this arch will look good with fitment because the metal is quite thick here. So uh, tuck is the way I'm going to go. So uh, can you get me a measuring tape? So I gotta shave off about two centimeters. Yeah. So about two centimeters. Yeah. Right. And then if we step, we don't have much space left. Two centimeters. We got about four centimeters play. So about four centimeters play. Yeah. But we can bend the lip in, because failure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we we need to we need to uh, bring the wheel in by about two centimeters, and that will leave us with about four centimeters gap to actually step the wheel and add another lip on. So I think we're gonna go at 17 because 17 would work the best, uh, purely because it's a stepped lip. Um, if we go 18, it's going to have an extra step and I don't think it will fit here. So 17 is the way we got to go. Um, I would have liked 18 because the 18 wheel would have looked big. And, uh, but I think I'm happy with it. So step up, this is an 8J, so we can go to 9J. We can even go to 9.5J. No, 9J actually. Yeah, 9J. Yeah. Because remember, we're taking off. Uh, possibly around 2 J's and then we're gonna step so 9 J okay so the rear must be about 9 J sure. so the rear is sorted I got my measurements I know what I need to do let me actually make note of it okay now we got our rear sorted now let's go to the more stressful part which is the front Okay, now, guys, so we're busy with the front now. Uh, same problem we're having. It's a 7J wheel, right, with a 45 offset. Uh, the problem with this offset is that the back of the wheel is catching against your strut. So that means that the front wheel's offset has got to be changed as well. So we need to bring this a bit more in. Uh, so I'm going to measure as well. Edie, what you think about? About two centimeters, also. Yeah, the tire. So let's work on three. So three and a half. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna work on three and a half centimeters here, uh, purely because we wanna we want the tire to clear. Even though I am gonna be running a stretch tire. Uh, so working on three and a half centimeters, the wheel needs to come in and then lift it up and let's calculate now. Uh, actually, Edie, let's put a spacer on here. Yeah, it's catching ugly. Shove. So guys, something I want to show you as well, right? Um, 
when, when you normally do wheels, when you normally uh, uh, put spacers, right? This is not ideally the, the nicest spacer. You can buy these spacers at Midas and any AutoZone or any most shops. But there's another type of a spacer we use, which is called a hub-centric spacer. Uh, the quality is much, much better. You guys can see. Uh, I normally use these type of spacers on the cars if we need to. But something that a lot of you guys probably don't know is that each car, this piece is called your center bore. So you have your center bore of your car, you have your center bore of your wheel. So normally if you fit the aftermarket set of wheels, you'll find wheel shops normally put a pink or a purple or a black plastic thing that sits in the center. The reason for that is because they try and accommodate the new wheel to the car's original center bore. So when you're driving, you don't get vibrations in it. So that's very important for you guys to check. Uh, is your center bore of your wheel? And also put speaker rings if necessary, if you are using aftermarket wheels. Uh, it's a safety tip. Trust me, uh, I had a bad experience with that, so I'm talking from experience here. Okay, Iri, let's fit. Okay, now see guys, we got a little bit more clearance now. Can you guys see? But now you might be asking me, why don't I run a spacer instead of cutting the wheel? Remember, when you step, you're coming out this way. So if I am going to put a spacer on, it means that my distance when the car tucks is very limited and I don't want that. So I have to modify the rear of the wheel to accommodate the front as well. Um, so let's see how low we can get this car. Also another silly tip as well, um, whenever you're putting your wheel nuts on and your wheel studs on, always go across. Don't uh, put this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Follow a cross order uh, purely because it aligns the wheel better and there's a less probability of you stripping the studs on the wheel. So that's another chip tip. Okay guys, now we, now we come to the stress and the hiccup in the air ride suspension part. So there is a lot of space left between the fender and the wheel. And you guys know that wheel gap is a crime. So the problem we set with is that the strut has been modified. Uh, so in order to get it to fit, the E30 shock was used and the strut was modified a little bit lower. But that's not enough. So we actually got to strip the front struts out and we got to send it back to uh, Airlux and Airlux has got to shorten the strut and put a shorter shock for us just so that the wheel can tuck more. So guys, look at, look at the wheel gap. This is basically the furthest that it can go with this strut. Um, so that's a bit of a stress because ideally, I would have liked to have measured the wheel with it being fully dropped so I get an idea of where I want it. So it's going to make it a little bit more difficult to measure now. And also it's going to add a few more days on our timeline. Uh, so it's a bit of a stress. Um, hopefully we come right with it. I'm confident we can. So that's the next step to getting the car slammed on the ground. Hopefully we'll get it right. I just put the original wheel on just to show you guys more or less how the car will sit. This is a 14 inch wheel. Uh, on 14, the car will be much lower if you guys can see. Um, so ideally, this is the tuck more or less we want to go with. Um, now that I think about it, I, ho I, I actually, I, I don't know if I made the right decision in terms of the wheel choice because this wheel is a straight fit. Maybe it would have been easier to, to step this wheel. But again, from a 14 to a 17 looks nice, but you gotta go with a bit of a big dish to get it to sit lacquer. So maybe I could have done this wheel, but ideally, the RS on the E9 is the ultimate wheel, so we're gonna make it work. Uh, but this is more or less how it should sit or, the, or, or, or what we wanna try and achieve. Uh, what do you guys think? Do you guys think this should have been the wheel choice or the RS? Um, that's the thing when you're building cars and when you, you, you have a deadline, 
you're always going to have hiccups, guys. Um, you know, and there's always going to be issues, especially on an old car, especially if it's custom work. It's not like going and servicing a car where you buy the parts, you put it in. Uh, custom work always takes time. Um, so yeah, we've hit our first few hiccups. I want to take you guys to the front of the car and show you guys the spoiler now. Come to another complication and uh, this bowl just gets better and better, guys. So this is an aftermarket uh, spoiler. It doesn't fit 100% on the car. It, the, the, the left hand side lines up, everything else lines up. The problem we're sitting with is this corner here and the mounting points here on the side. So we are actually going to have to play around with the spoiler and re-modify it a bit just to get it to sit a bit more flush. Um, if it was plastic, plastic is easier to maneuver. Fiberglass, you gotta be very careful because where you maneuver, it can crack and it can cause a bit of a weak spot in the fiberglass. So for example, if the car airs out and you knock the spoiler and there's a weak spot, the spoiler will crack. So we gotta be very careful with the way we modify the spoiler. So that's another, uh, 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 I won't say problem, but it's another hiccup uh, that we didn't expect to face. Um, so it's cool. I mean, we're in the custom game, we come across problems all the time. And, and building an old school car is technically problem solving. So there's a problem, you gotta solve it. And that's how you move forward, guys. So this is another hiccup. We will definitely get it right. So uh, my man Dennis is a champion at solving my problems in the paint shop. Uh, so yeah, so let me show you guys the interior. As you guys can see, the interior is semi-stripped. Um, we still need to strip the door panels. Uh, we still need to strip the carpet, the roof liner, but we're doing it bit by bit. Um, the, the complication we're running into is that when we work after hours, it's load shedding. So there's not much we can do. So we're possibly gonna come in on, a sun, on, on Sundays to try and finish the car up and work a little bit later. Hopefully we'll get it done, guys. Um, I wanna show you something as well. Now you'll notice these pipes are in the car. Um, I give clients an option. So when we do air ride on cars, we put a one meter braided hose in the front and we put a one meter braided hose at the back. So braided hoses are much, much better quality with the stainless steel fittings. So you are less prone to leaks and you are less prone to your pipes bursting. Uh, it's a much better quality. Um, depending on the client's budget, um, we do sometimes run braided hoses from the front to the back to the solenoid. I do recommend it. It costs a bit of money, but it's much more safer. Uh, and like I said, it's less prone to the pipe tearing or cracking or leaks. So that is the route that we've gone with on this car. So full braided hoses front to back. Um, I need to start stripping the wood. I don't have much time. Um, I'm thinking of doing the center console as well. Um, if we had time, I would have wrapped the complete dash in the leather, but we don't have time. And I don't really want to fiddle much with the dash. I might, I might not, depending on, on, on the time factor. I feel there's a lot of other aspects on the car that we need to sort out. Uh, so I'll focus on that. And maybe towards the end of the, the build, maybe we can see we can add a few touches here and there. So the interior is stripped and we're on our way to doing the interior, guys. So you can see how stressed I am. There's a lot of work to do. Um, we don't have much time, but uh, I'm confident that we will be able to pull this off. Um, I, shift, I shifted up my target to the 5th of July, where we need to get the car to the depot, and hopefully the car will leave around the 10th of July and arrive 30 to 35 days later in the UK. So now we have the interior aspect. Luckily, the interior aspect is straightforward. The only complication is what design to go with. So I want to go with the original design. Um, I'm, I'm going to shy away from, from changing the design because I kind of like the original design. So the original design's got the lines coming down. So we'll keep with that. So I want to show you guys the leather. So we chose the light leather, um, the matching suede. The nice thing about this suede is that it's got a dark pattern 
when you run the suede like that so it matches with the leather and then we got the carpet i love the carpet the, I, I think the color is spot on uh, what do you guys think and then we've got the cotton uh, it's a quite quite a nice quality cotton as you can see so we're going to go with this combo on the interior and then the wooden combo like you guys said we're going with the darker wood but look at how nice the colors tie in guys it's going to look super super cool how cool is that i think it's a perfect match and and like i mentioned the interior is going to stand out it's going to be a talking point on the car um looking forward to that aspect the interior usually doesn't take us long to do to do a full car takes us about five days a week so i wanna i wanna teach you guys something about uh, upholstery so you get different density of foam you get your 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 white which is the uh, uh i won't say the cheapest they actually it is the cheapest foam then you get your blue which is a different density then you get your gray which is a different density and then you get your pink which is a different density ideally when we do custom uh, 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 stitching or when we do diamond stitching or we do anything that you want uh, the, the shape to pop out we normally go for the pink foam if it's a straightforward seat then we use uh, 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 the gray foam purely because the design is different so every seat that we re-trim gets new foam gets new material i always get asked the question uh, do we cover over the original covers no we don't we take we strip the covers and we use it as a template to trace on the leather and then we stitch it with the new foam and there's something else called calico or sponge bond which is what the upholstery guys know that gets stitched with the foam and your material so your material doesn't pull or lose shape um, so that's an upholstery tip so if you guys are are looking to do your upholstery and uh, you're not looking to do it by us if you're in cape town or wherever you are always make sure that they use a good quality high density foam because your seats tend to be more comfortable and it lasts much longer um, so yeah i hope you guys learned something on the upholstery side i bet you never knew about the density foam that we use or that you can use different types of foams when doing your upholstery very important uh, so hope you guys learned okay uh this car is just full of surprises and uh this is not the original color on the car the original color is chamonix which is a beige color as you can see here so we've started preparation on the engine bay due to the time frame we're not going to be removing the engine we're going to be tidying up most of the stuff we've been sent in for chroming i have received some of the components back which i show you i'll show you guys upstairs so the original color of the sky is beige guys um mind is blown now the question is and and let me tell you how much the color affects the interior of the car that interior will not go with the beige with the beige had i gone with the darker brown if i chose to change the car back to its original color then it would have matched but now because of the interior the materials are bought the plan is already underway i'm gonna keep this car this color um what would you have done would you guys have changed the color on the car uh would you guys have uh, uh, kept this color due to our time frame and also i don't really have a burgundy car in my oh i have an i have a 850 that's calypso red so this will be my second burgundy color uh, uh car in my collection so i don't think it's a bad thing um but yeah building cars guys always stress always surprises uh, let me show you guys some of the components that have arrived already now we come to the the, the positives in the build uh, some of the parts have arrived uh, so let's go through the bmw parts so as i mentioned in the previous video i i needed to change the sunroof rubber because the sunroof rubber on the car was not the original one so this is the sunroof rubber you guys can see it's a brand new set uh, parts came from Germany, it had to be ordered through BMW, so it's a brand new set, it's a two-piece rubber set, and then the corner indicator lamps have arrived, and then the fender grills have arrived as well, 
Okay, so I'm still waiting for the bonnet foam, uh, uh, the bonnet light and a few other small bits and pieces. Um, and then Harun actually brought some of the stuff through uh, for the chroming, so we got the front bumper back. Guys, the front bumper looks amazing. I actually don't want to open it. I'm going to just show you guys a bit of a corner here. Um, but you can see the quality of his work. It came out absolutely amazing. So uh, quite happy with that. Um, the air cleaner came back as well, fully chromed. It was, it was high polished, but now it's fully chromed. I'm still waiting for a few bits and pieces. So at least there is some positives uh, in the E9 story. Um, I'm confident that most of the parts will arrive in the next week or two weeks time. Uh, but these parts will only be put in last, uh, just after we paint the engine bay and we paint the spoiler. The spoiler's got to go on first, then we'll put the bumper. Uh, so definitely uh, excited for that. Some positives, like I've mentioned earlier. So uh, just the challenges. But again, like I mentioned, that's building a car, that's building an old school car. And remember, I'm not doing a full restoration. And we're already having hiccups. If I had to do a full restoration, uh, we definitely would not have made the deadline, especially if I had to paint the car. Um, so we're doing what we can with the time frame that we have. And hopefully if this works out, next year we can go uh, a little bit more prepared and also build the cars or spend more time on building another car for the show. Uh, so I'm excited for that as well. Okay, so, so guys, uh, still a lot more work to be done on the car, uh, but if you guys want to see more, stay tuned for the next episode, and uh, let's also do a, let's gauge how much hair I have left by the time the build is done, because it's already stressful uh, running this business, having the amount of cars, and also trying to build a car after hours for myself is not an easy task, plus in between you still got uh, shoots that we're trying to do, uh, the YouTube channel, so there's a lot of stuff going on. I wish I had a, uh, uh, another version of me in this business because it would have made my life a lot easier. But again, uh, as you start growing in life and as you start growing as a business, it doesn't get easier, your challenges become bigger and it's a good problem to have, remember that. Um, I want to tell you guys about the shipping, give you an update of the shipping. So I chatted to the gents at CNR Global Logistics out in the UK. Um, they are the gents that will be handling the shipping from Johannesburg till the time gets in, uh, till the time the car gets into the UK. So a special shout out to the gents. Um, they were kind enough to come on board as a sponsor for the shipping. Uh, they're going to be contributing a portion of the shipping. Uh, so shout out to you guys. I really appreciate it. It makes things so much easier, I promise you. Um, um, and also, I, I appreciate the fact that you guys are coming on board. Uh, you guys are a UK-based company and you guys are, are, are getting on board with the South African company. It says a lot about your, your, your business ethic and we really appreciate it. So from my side, thank you so much. And from South Africa's side, thank you so much to you guys. I'm popping their details up on the screen. Give them a call for all your shipping needs. Uh, they have made the process so much easier for me. They've actually taken a big chunk of my stress off and they are handling the complete shipping. I got some exciting news. So, uh, shipping sorted. Now we need to find a place where the car is going to stand up until I arrive in the UK or up until the car goes to Birmingham for the show. So the gents at Car Audio and Security, Raj and Palm, legends i promise you guys i look up to them totally they are doing some insane stuff uh, with cars um, pioneers in the uk when it comes to bagging cars etc um, check their youtube channel out and check their instagram page out shout out to you guys thank you so much for accommodating us and allowing the e9 to stand and for you guys to store the car for us it really means a lot and also uh, pa mentioned that he wants to do a feature on the E9 on their channel, so I'm looking forward to that. So thank you so much for you guys. Um, something that I'm happy with is that even though we're facing challenges, things are falling into place. So, so 
we got a few cool sponsors on board like uh, Airlock Suspension, uh, MFH Powder Coating, uh, CNR Global Logistics, uh, Palm and them from Car Audio and Security are storing the cars. So there's a lot of people starting to come on board now which is making things a bit easier for us. So I'm looking forward to that, I'm very excited. So in essence, it's meant for this car to go. Uh, now I'm just waiting for my visa application to get approved and then we can start uh, 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 getting things ready to get ourselves there. Uh, looking forward to it. I still can't believe that we are going to be attending the show, guys. It's like a bucket list thing. It's a dream come true. I'm looking forward to it. And hopefully, uh, Skid Marks will be joining us. So we're in talks with one, one or two sponsors to, to get Skid Marks to come with me and go and actually shoot content uh, uh, for the channel and also to cover the whole journey to the UK. Uh, so looking forward to that as well. And, and again, this, this channel is about promoting a lot of people. So on the next update, we're going to be covering uh, a, a portion from high tech who's doing the customizing on the wheel. That's going to be insane. And also, if you guys own a business or a side hustle and you want us to give you some airtime on the channel, uh, please get into contact with us. Details are on the screen. Uh, we'd love to review your product and also talk about you, a little bit about your business because this channel is about growing the car scene and also growing SA businesses or businesses in general. I mean, the logistics company, they're all the way in the UK, but we want to give them exposure, car audio and security exposure. So no matter where you are, if you're involved in anything automotive, please give us a call or email us and let's get you guys on the channel. Thank you so much for subscribing, liking, sharing, supporting. You guys are awesome. You guys have been amazing. Uh, as this video hits, we are on 8,700 subscribers and we're almost at 10,000 subscribers, guys. What I need you guys to do is to please blow up this video. Comment down below. Get as many people to subscribe. And of course, we have champions that are interacting with us. You guys are awesome. We appreciate everything. We have a lot of love for you guys. And let's go to the UK, guys. Let's show them what SA is all about. I'll catch you guys on the next episode. Um, be safe.